Hey, what's going on guys? Coming back at you with another video. And today we're going to go over the top 10 free agents in the NFL. Of course, going into free agency coming up within the next couple of weeks or so. Uh, if you guys are new, maybe hit that subscribe button. And uh, let's go ahead and jump right into it. This video is basically going to be the top 10 or so free agents in the NFL this year, in my opinion. I've done a nice little ranking system of them. And we're going to go over who I think some potential suitors of these players might be. And then in the end, where I think they'll actually go, if anywhere at all. So let's go ahead and start at number 10. Do I start? It? I'm going to start at 1. It's just, I am. So number 1 is going to be Le'Veon Bell. Current Pittsburgh Steelers running back. It's kind of been a weird situation with Le'Veon Bell, if you guys have been following it at all. The Steelers don't really want to pay Le'Veon Bell all that money he wants for a long-term deal. He does have potential off-the-field issues, you know, marijuana and stuff. I really wouldn't be too worried about it. It's nothing uh, real serious, but he has been uh, suspended before. Again, not really too concerned about it. In my opinion, he is the best running back in the league. David Johnson's great. I don't think as good as Le'Veon Bell. Didn't play at all last season due to injury. Well, pretty much didn't play at all. Le'Veon Bell is phenomenal. The two teams I have for him are the Steelers and the Detroit Lions. The reason I had the Steelers is he could easily be franchise tagged. And now he said that if he gets franchise tagged, he's going to hold out and not play until he gets a new deal. It's possible that the Steelers don't franchise tag him. It's a legitimate possibility. Another possibility is that he hits the open market, gets a lot of money, and a team with some money to spend, a team in need of a running back, is the Detroit Lions. Le'Veon Bell went to school at Michigan State. Detroit Lions, of course, are in Michigan. Make a lot of sense for Le'Veon Bell to go back to Michigan, sign with the Lions for a long-term mega deal, a lot of money. I think that's a potential possibility. Uh, however, I think that he will end up going back to the Steelers. I think they're going to hit him with the franchise tag, and then we'll play that game of whether he holds out or what's happened uh, with that. But yeah, I think he's going to go back to the Steelers. At number two, I have Kirk Cousins. The reason he's so high up on the board is because quarterback is the most important position in the NFL. I know there are a lot of other ones that are super important, but the quarterback is the most important. The teams with the best quarterbacks perform the best as a group because great quarterbacks can carry bad teams. You look at Aaron Rodgers and the Packers is a prime example of that. Um, and Kirk Cousins is an above average quarterback in the NFL, and it's such an important position. He's going to get a max contract more, uh, more than likely wherever he goes. Some teams that I have here are the New York Jets, Minnesota Vikings, Denver Broncos and Cleveland Browns. There's not even a shot, not even an outside chance he returns to the Redskins under any circumstance. They don't want him. They went out, they traded for Alex Smith, signed him to a four-year extension. Kirk Cousins is hitting the open market 100%. Uh, I think I'm feeling on this one that he's going to end up going uh, to the New York Jets. I was originally team Broncos for a while to land Kirk Cousins. I thought it made a ton of sense. I think Kirk Cousins really wants to play like in the spotlight. I think he wants it. I think it's he thinks it's going to be his time. I think he's going to go want to play in a huge market, and that is the biggest market in sports, arguably, which is New York. LA, I think, is a very close second. Um, I think the Vikings are going to be huge suitors for him, as Teddy Bridgewater is a free agent, not going to re-sign Case Keenum, not going to re-sign Sam Bradford. They need a quarterback pretty badly, even though it seems like they have three. They really don't have any. So I think the Vikings are going to heavily try and pursue him. Cleveland Browns, another one of those teams that needs a quarterback pretty badly. They have the most cap space in the NFL by an overwhelming margin. Um, so much cap space, so much money to give Kirk Cousins and just absolutely throw at him. And the Browns are actually not a terrible team in terms of overall roster. That offensive line is getting better. They're going to get Joe Thomas back next year. Bunch of really, really young up-and-coming players that are performing. Uh, they have the youngest roster in the NFL by, again, an overwhelming margin. So the Browns are a team that's only getting better, and there may be a quarterback in a year or two away from making the playoffs, and I really do believe that. So if they can land Kirk Cousins, that'd be a really good shot for them. With the Broncos, like another team that needs a quarterback, obviously Brock Osweiler, Paxton Lynch, Trevor Simeon, you got three quarterbacks there, not really particularly good, uh, and maybe Kirk Cousins is your option. And then the Jets, another team that needs a quarterback, um, you know, could work. I think he's going to end up going to the Jets. It's just sometimes going gut feeling. That's what I'm doing for this video for opinion. And I think the Jets are going to throw at him uh, or throw him a lot of money. And I think he'll end up signing there. 
As always, guys, though, this is completely subjective. Be sure to tell me exactly what you think is going to happen down in the comment section below and whether you agree with my list or not. Number three, I have Demarcus Lawrence, the, for, uh, the former Boise State edge rusher, Dallas Cowboy. Uh, I believe second round pick. He might have gone as late as a third. Um, but coming off his best season, he was phenomenal last year. And of course, it had to be a contract year. So he's going to go out and get his money. That's why he's a top free agent on my list. Um, I think he's coming into his prime. Had a fantastic season last year. I really can't uh, say that enough. And I think when you look at these four teams here I've listed, um, I think the most likely is to return to the Cowboys. I think they might franchise tag him, um, which would be paying him a lot. However, I think it'd be worth it to keep him on your team. I think the Jets could also throw him a lot of money. Their defensive line is something that's a little bit shaky, and Demarcus Lawrence could come in and help that out quite a bit. They do have Leonard Williams, but they have a bunch of these players that's like, are they really in the long-term future of your team? Like Muhammad Wilkerson, he's more of a 3-4 end. They need... I think a pure edge rusher and they haven't really had that i think demarcus lawrence would be a dominant edge rusher to bring onto their team bucks are another team robert ayers had a solid season last year but they don't really have that edge presence the way they'd like to jaquise smith really is not much uh and then robert ayers is like 32 coming off a decent season but they do need more edge help really really badly they could choose to address it in the draft maybe a bradley chubb if he's available which i doubt he will be but i think demarcus lawrence could be someone that they pursue and then I have the Tennessee Titans. I think the Titans are a team that uh, could easily be targeted. And I think the reasoning for that is they have gone out and they've paid edge rushers before. You look at Brian Arakpo is someone that they brought in for a lot of money and he was good uh, with them coming off the edge for a while. I think they wouldn't hesitate to do the same exact thing again. This time, Brian Arakpo is the one that is aging. Demarcus Lawrence could come in and really help out on the edge there. At number four, I have Drew Brees. How is a potential top five quarterback barely in the top five for my top 10 NFL free agents. And I will tell you why. Drew Brees, obviously aging quarterback. He's coming up on 40 very, very quickly. And even though he's playing at a decently high level, uh, I think last season showed that he is regressing a little bit at least. He just turned 39 in January. Um, he is still a talented player. I think he could easily carry some teams uh, to a playoff berth. And I think he will end up going back to the Saints. It just, it wouldn't seem right that the Saints would move on from him, especially coming off um, an NFC championship nearly birth. Of course, there was uh, some stuff that went down at the end of that game that uh, had the Vikings going instead of the Saints that we won't really get into for the sake of some of these Saints fans. But I think it would make sense to bring back your franchise quarterback, one of the best players, if not the best player in Saints history. I would say that he is certainly the best player in Saints history. I could also see him if the Saints don't choose to re-sign him or if he wants to go somewhere else, which again, I doubt, but it is possible. Buffalo Bills are an option. They clearly want to move on from Nathan Peterman uh, and Tyrod Taylor. Not so much Nathan Peterman, but they don't want him to be their starting quarterback. They're moving on from Tyrod Taylor, uh, I would say almost certainly. And Drew Brees could come in there, go to a decent team, and help out that offense quite a bit. And then you look at the Cleveland Browns, another team. They need a quarterback. They have a lot of money that they'd be willing to throw at him, and I think could be a really cool landing spot for them. If Drew Brees were to go to the Browns, I think that's a playoff team this year. If they have a good draft, good rest of free agency, Drew Brees, I think, is the missing piece. He's one of the best quarterbacks we've ever seen in the NFL, and that could easily, even 39-year-old Drew Brees, I think that could easily help the Browns in the playoffs this year. But without a quarterback, I think the Browns only win a couple of games this year. Next up, I have Allen Robinson. Coming off a season where he was injured, I believe for the entire season with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Very unfortunate when a star player uh, is hurt the way he was. But I don't think the Jaguars are going to be able to re-sign him. I think they're going to think they have a decent group of receivers. And Allen Robinson's going to demand too much money or demand too much money on the open market. I think I said demand kind of weird. Um, and I don't think the Jags are going to be able to keep him. They, you know, Maybe they think we have, oh, Allen Hearns, Marquise Lee, I believe is a free agent. But maybe they want to re-sign him. Keelan Cole, D.D. Westbrook. I don't think they're going to think that they need Allen Robinson and pay him all the money that he's going to request when they're more of a pound the rock style of offense, considering Blake Bortles is not a solid starting quarterback. I know Robbie Blake Bortles, we all love you, but you're not that good. Allen Robinson, I don't think he's going to return to the Jaguars. Some potential teams I have are the Ravens, Bears, Niners, and again, 
the Browns. We're going to first start with the Ravens. I think the Ravens has shown an inaptitude in the past to target receivers and re-sign receivers, but I think given that this is Ozzie Smith's, uh, well, not Ozzie Smith, what is this, shortstop for the Cardinals in the 80s and 90s? No. Ozzie Newsom's last year as general manager for the Ravens, he's stepping down but still remaining in the system. I think maybe he's going to go more all out, get some weapons for Joe Flacco. Allen Robinson would be a massive weapon. I believe he's six foot three, decent speed, huge jump ball receiver with great route running. He's one of the deep ball, best deep ball receivers in the NFL. It's just a fact. Ravens could easily pair him with Joe Flacco and create a decent little weapon there in Baltimore. Bears are another one. I think the Bears really, really need a, a wide receiver, like, very badly. Cameron Meredith is a free agent. Uh, the Kevin White experiment has proven uh, not really to go very well, as he is what, played a game in his three years. And again, Cam Meredith, another really solid player. Another tall player. Bears really like that style of receiver, but he is a free agent. They might not be able to retain him. And even if they did it, you need more help there. Allen Robinson could give Mitchell Trubisky, the young quarterback, a new big target to help him out quite a bit. You remember Jay Cutler with Alshon Jeffrey and Brandon Marshall. That was actually a really, really good pairing for a year or two um, in Chicago. I could look to bring in another big receiver and make some stuff happen with that. 49ers. I think this one makes a lot of sense too. I'm kind of feeling this one. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. 49ers don't really have many receiving options. You look at Marquise Goodwin. I love Marquise Goodwin. I'm a Texas Longhorns fan. Marquise Goodwin isn't a good player. He's just very fast really love him. He's very fast. He's just not a great receiver. He's only 5'8", so he's clearly not a number one. Trent Taylor's another solid guy, but he's a situational role player, in my opinion. They don't really have many big receiving targets. Allen Robinson would give Jimmy Garoppolo a gigantic one. That could be a really, really fun combo in San Fran. And then same deal with the Browns. They need receivers so badly. Terrell Pryor was good for them two years ago. He's going to be a free agent again after a terrible stint in Washington. Um, Allen Robinson could easily go to the Browns uh, and take a lot of money. They could pay him a ton. However, if I had to give you a gut instinct feeling on this one, I'm feeling the 49ers. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think this could easily happen. Number six, I have Sheldon Richardson, Seahawk defensive lineman. Uh, he's in a Jets uniform, clearly. And I think the teams I have listed for him are actually pretty interesting. New York Jets, Buffalo Bills, two AFC East teams, and then I went ahead and did two NFC East teams in the Washington Redskins and Dallas Cowboys. All of these teams need defensive linemen pretty badly. I think Sheldon Richardson back to New York could be a fun dynamic, whether they'd like to do that or not, I don't know. He's another guy with some potential off-the-field concerns, but they do need the help on the defensive line. He's a former defensive rookie of the year. He was really, really good as a New York Jet. I think he could end up going back there. With the Buffalo Bills, trade away Marcel Darius. Kyle Williams is super old. You need more help on the interior of that defensive line. Sheldon Richardson could be a huge piece to bring into Buffalo. With the Dallas Cowboys, another team that needs help on the defensive line. I think mean, that pretty much goes without saying. On the interior, especially Demarcus Lawrence, you might lose anyway. Maybe you play Sheldon Richardson as an edge rusher. I know the Jets did that for a while. They lined Sheldon Richardson up as a 3-4 outside linebacker, which was kind of weird. And then the Washington Redskins. They could easily use help on that defensive line. Um, and Sheldon Richardson could be that one piece that they're missing to get a really dominant uh, front four. You look at Ryan Kerrigan off the edge. You look at Preston Smith off the edge is a really fun one. I think Trent Murphy is a free agent, so he's probably not going to return to Washington. And then Matt Ioannidis is actually really, really good. Jonathan Allen, really, really good. Maybe you play Sheldon Richardson um, alongside Jonathan Allen. I think that'd be a really, really fun pairing. And uh, yeah, I would, if I have to say, uh, I think Sheldon Richardson is going to end up going to the Cowboys. I think they have some money to spend on the defensive side of the ball. Sheldon Richardson would be a gigantic help to their defensive line. And uh, let's go ahead and move on to number seven. Number seven I have is Andrew Norwell, the best offensive lineman in the class. I'm surprised kind of that I have him ranked so low as he is one of the best offensive guards in the NFL. I think probably top five. Um, yet I do have him at number seven. I think the others were just a little bit better. And you could have flip-flopped maybe Andrew Norwell and Sheldon Richardson. And the three teams I have for him are my favorite team, the New York Giants. Felt like it was necessary to preface that. The Miami Dolphins and the Detroit Lions. I don't think the Carolina Panthers are going to re-sign him. I think with the New York Giants, you have a situation where they're probably not going to bring back Justin Pugh. Western Richburg's another guy they're probably not going to bring back at center, but you know, Justin Pugh was a starting left guard. Andrew Norwell could be a great replacement. The Giants don't have a ton of money to spend in free agency as a whole. They might look to just take a big piece 
uh, and help out the offensive line and sign Andrew Norwell. Of course, Dave Gettleman is the new GM of the Giants. Coming from the Panthers, he got Norwell. So maybe he's going to go after him again. Andrew Norwell might respond to that, say, all right, I'll become a New York Giant, protect Eli Manning, and help out that offensive line, uh, depending on what kind of money he gets. Miami Dolphins are another one. They could use help on the offensive line. I think Andrew Norwell will be a really good fit there. Um, and then play, you know, Larmy Tunsil as a more pure tackle, which is what he did last year, I believe. Uh, and then the Detroit Lions. Kind of a weird situation there. You lose Larry Warford like two years ago. Haven't really had a solid uh, group of guards since. I know they signed TJ Lang. He's a bit older. Could use some more help. I think Andrew Norrell would be a really, really good fit there. Help out that offensive line. Give Matt Stafford some more time. Help out in the run game if they bring in a running back. They're definitely going to draft one if they don't sign Le'Veon Bell or something like that or LeGarrette Blunt. I think they're definitely going to draft one. Um, but yeah, if I had to say, I think Andrew Norwell is going to go to New York Giants. New York Giants, he's at the center of their free agent plans, or those are the rumors at least. Uh, and I think it's going to be a little bit too much for the Giants to ask to not get him, if you guys know what I mean by that, um, because they really need the offensive line help. Andrew Norwell is purely the best. They have Dave Gettleman. I think all the pieces are going to align and send Andrew Norwell uh, into MetLife as New York Giant. Number eight, I have LaMarcus Joyner. If you guys don't know the name, you better learn it. One of the best safeties in the NFL last season. He's a guy that can also play nickel cornerback, extremely versatile, a guy that hits hard, covers extremely well. LaMarcus Joyner is a phenomenal young player. Really, really exciting to watch. However, you see my three teams, 49ers, Rams, Browns. Uh, I'll give a couple of reasons for each. For the 49ers, I think definitely could use the safety help. Chiquisky Tart is a solid, strong safety, but Jimmy Ward, is he a corner? Is he a safety? Not really good in, in either. Eric Reed's a free agent. Probably not going to re-sign him. Uh, LaMarcus Joyner, I mean, the 49ers have seen what he's capable of, obviously playing in the same division. I think they could easily target him. With the Cleveland Browns, really could use the free safety help. Derek Kindred isn't terrible. I think Jabril Peppers would fit that more uh, in-the-box strong safety role a little bit better, though. And then LaMarcus Joyner could help out at free safety, nickel cornerback, kind of do it all. Very versatile player. Browns have a ton of money to throw at him. They could if they wanted to. And then the Rams, of course, he is on the Rams right now. Uh, I think they're going to end up franchise tagging him. They have their franchise tag. Maybe it goes between LaMarcus Joyner and Sammy Watkins. I think they're just going to value LaMarcus Joyner a little bit more. And I think they will end up using the franchise tag on him if they can't reach a long-term deal. So I'm going to say LaMarcus Joyner back to the LA Rams uh, on a one-year, like, whatever the franchise tag value is. I think it might be like 12 mil for safety. I'm not positive on that, though. But yeah, I think he's going to get tagged. At number nine, I have Sammy Watkins. We're going to go with another Los Angeles Ram here. Four teams I have are the Niners, Bears, Browns, and Chiefs. You see the Browns popping up a lot. It's purely because they have so much money to spend. And a lot of these top free agents are the Browns' biggest weaknesses. Wide receiver, safety, nickel cornerback. So it makes a lot of sense. Quarterback, of course. Um, with the Niners, Again, we talked about Allen Robinson. They could use the receiver help. I think Sammy Watkins and Jimmy Garoppolo could be another really fun pairing. Sammy Watkins is a guy that was drafted super high. I think the Bills traded up to number four to get him. Um, and just through injury, never really lived up to his potential. But he's still a really, really young player. Like Sammy Watkins is unbelievably young for being drafted in 2014. If I look it up here, he is only 24 years old. And he won't turn 25 until June. So he is still so, so young, and he is worthy of a long-term deal, I think. So if you can get over the injury concern, Sammy Watkins is easily worth that. Uh, Bears are another team that need a receiver. We talked about that. Browns we talked about. We didn't talk about the Chiefs, though. I think they could use another big body receiver. Of course, you have Tyree Kill with great speed in the slot down the seam, you know, down the sideline as well. Tyree Kill, very, very fast, catches, you know, drag screens exciting but they don't really have another solid receiver and now they have some playmakers that have played okay i'm not saying those don't exist chris conley demarcus robinson um like those are some players that have played okay all right but they don't really have that pure good solid other option from tyree kill i think sammy watkins could be exactly that um chiefs have been making a lot of moves this offseason acquiring picks clearing sat uh clearing cap, I should say, salaries and things like that with Alex Smith and um, Marcus Peters, 
Chiefs could choose to target a cornerback, but I think they're also going to target a wide receiver. Sammy Watkins could fit that profile really well. At number 10, we're going to go with Kyle Fuller of the Chicago Bears. Teams I have here are the Bears, Browns, Chiefs, and 49ers, a very similar look of teams. Uh, I think more than likely the Bears are going to use a franchise tag on him, but for the same reason we talked about earlier, I think uh, the Browns might target a cornerback boundary. Um, I think Brian ba Body Calhoun is good. I think Jason McCourty is good, but McCourty's a little bit older. Could play Kyle Fuller in the nickel, but also I think he would work well as a boundary corner, as he did uh, at a very high level in Chicago. Was also super solid in the nickel. You could do a number of different things with him. Um, with the Niners, they need the cornerback help so badly. They just don't really have any true uh, solid cornerbacks there. And it's a big part of why their team has been struggling. And then I think the last one is the most fun, and that's the Kansas City Chiefs. They're a team that just traded away Marcus Peters, their franchise cornerback, if you will. You trade for Kendall Fuller. Hey, Kyle Fuller and Kendall Fuller are brothers. Yeah, no kidding. I think that'd be a super fun dynamic the Fuller brothers together in Kansas City, both coming off career years. That'd be a super fun thing to do. Uh, and whether that's, you know, Chiefs playing for fun or they're playing for the smart move, I don't know. But Kyle Fuller's super good, out, coming off a great season. Kendall Fuller coming off a fantastic season as well. How fun would it be to have the Fuller brothers together on the same defense, playing in the same secondary? Be pretty awesome. And screw it, one more for good measure. Jimmy Graham to the Pats free agent don't think the Seahawks are going to retain him with Gronk retirement looming potentially Martellus Bennett getting older probably not going to be retained Jimmy Graham to the Patriots makes a ton of sense gives another huge tight end target which is something the Patriots love Jimmy Graham to the Patriots can you believe that can you imagine I don't want to I'm not a Patriots fan I don't like the Patriots but you can't tell me this wouldn't make a lot of sense for the Patriots to do Jimmy Graham to go play with Tom Brady be dominant once again I don't know. You guys let me know what you think down in the comment section below, but that's going to be it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. This was a lot of fun to make. Let me know if you want me uh, to do more videos like this. Give me some ideas down in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're new, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.